Hello everyone, beautiful people. So tonight we are with Alex Hein, author of the book Master of the Day, also founder of the of the brand Modern Health Monk, and is also a YouTuber followed followed for, for more than three thousand people. So Alex, how are you tonight? First of all, uh, great. Thanks for having me here. Great. Excited tonight in port uh, in Berlin, like uh, yeah. you and. <laughs> In USA, it's different. So thank you so much. Uh, I'm a great uh, admirer of your work, first of all. So uh, I wanted uh, first to ask you a little bit of your story for the people that uh, don't know you. Mm -hmm. In an ex special, I was doing a little bit of research. I was very interested about your vision quest in the de in the desert, mm -hmm. and I think it's something unique and uh, your time in shine if you could if you can tell me a little bit about your story and that also please. yeah so when i was about 20 21 i did this vision quest in the sahara desert and you know like when i was a kid sometimes kids have these mysterious interests and you don't know where they come from and maybe this is why people believe in past lives because they don't know where these mysterious interests come from so when I was a little kid, I always read books on spirituality, on mysticism. I liked reading about monks and holy people. And I always read about these people would dedicate time to being, you know, like Jesus, the 40 days and like the, all these people, the monks in the desert. And I was like, you know, Native Americans, like these young men have these rituals, these rites of passage. And I thought that would be really interesting to see how deep I could go and to see if I could have like a vision or something that would kind of show me what I should do next in life. So I'm 21 and I go on this vision quest and I was actually traveling with nomads. So the, the Tuareg as they're called, they're like Berbers. So some of these nomadic tribes, you know, they have their head covered, they have their face covered um, on a camel caravan, traveling with camels for three weeks in the desert. And then they leave me for five days in a sand dune with just water. <laughs> so, yeah, so no food. And then I'm just sitting there meditating and, and praying. And, you know, when I came back, I think for me, it made me realize that my regular life, you know, the regular life I saw most people having was just never going to work for me. I, I just knew I could not just get a job, get married, have two kids and just begin in the regular life. You know, I knew there was something else out there. So I had to figure out what that was. And after that vision quest, somebody gave me a book on Taoism and i had always been into, you know, Kung Fu and martial arts. And so I figured I worked for one year professionally after that. And I was like, am I really going to do this for 40 years? Like people do this their whole lives with no breaks. That is crazy. And so I ended up booking this one-way ticket to China and I thought I was just going to stay forever. I thought I was going to become a monk. I thought I was going to become a martial artist, Kung Fu master. Uh, and I ended up staying for about a year. But basically after studying martial arts in China and after learning to speak and read Chinese and having this great adventure, I came back and I realized I had to figure out like career-wise, what was I building that was the intersection of you know, that thing that really excites me, but also something that's really meaningful and really impactful and helps people change the way they live their life. And so it was many more years before I even started Modern Health Monk. Um, and that's how kind of it all started building. Well, first of all, it's amazing the experience that you had, like uh, five days just with water. Come on, man. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's painful. It's just for that, you should write a book. Just yeah, for that yeah, vision really. quest, that's my opinion. And also, <laughs> I'm really, really, I'm, I'm also a practitioner of martial arts. I do Ooh. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Nice. How do you think that martial arts helped you to, to, to develop that kind of mindset? I don't know what, what you did Kung Fu. I think you also do, or you did Judo also. Yeah, I think for me, you know, one of the things in martial arts is that you learn that, you know, strength is useful, but strength can't solve every problem, right? Like 
if you're good at what you do, like you look at an MMA fights, a lot of these best guys that walk in, like Anderson Silva, not a, you look at him, you're not scared of him. You know, okay. he's not like these huge guys that are just look scary, but he destroyed everybody, you know? And even at the amateur level, I've, my friend uh, did some amateur MMA fights and some amateur kickboxing fights. And I was surprised. These guys are the very first amateur fight. They're beginners, like six months training. Okay. And I was shocked because every, there were three fights. And every single fight, there was a regular looking guy and then a big muscular guy. But the same weight class. And I was like, oh, this is going to be bad. Every, every single big guy lost big time. Because the other guy was more technical, more relaxed more skilled and i think a lot of that is true in life and especially business because in business we're taught you approach it like a professional athlete you grind hard you work long hours you push but that that does not guarantee success in business not at all you know like the, the all these startup companies with millions of dollars and the smartest people they still fail very frequently 90 percent so there's a there's you know, the fight, the push, the discipline is important in life, but it isn't everything. It doesn't get you 100%. So that's where the, you know, like in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you have to move or you have to yield or you have to find the, the point of best leverage to get a lock. So that's how I think about it. Exactly. Beautiful. So what do you think that should be? So discipline, it's part of the, the process to the succeed. What, what do you think that is the, the extra step that you need to, 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 to succeed in business and in life? Alex? I think one of the biggest things that nobody talks about is the ability to trust your gut. Because it's interesting, you talk to a lot of successful business people, and you stop the business BS talk, like, don't talk about the normal things, ask them how much they use their intuition and their gut in business. A very high percentage say that's the main way they make decisions. Because sometimes you work so hard to like you work so hard to make this business work. You work so hard to try to attract this girl you want to be your girlfriend. You try so hard to make this career work, but there's just a wall there. And that wall means either we have to do something different or we have to trust our gut. Because, you know, when I said like, this is discipline, this is this much of the game. The other half is the letting go, the surrender, is the sensitivity, is trusting your gut, is like, the smart way is feeling, feeling what's not working and why it's not working, you know? And I think all the, you look at like artists, musicians, all the innovators, all of them have felt internally. There's like, there's something off here. I need to do something different. Like there's something wrong with this field, this industry, you know, like Apple, we need to innovate and do something differently. Or an artist that decides to do a completely different type of painting or completely different type of music. There's, that's why like success is so hard to predict because it's not just one thing. It's a thousand things. And unless there's a way to track 1000 factors, I don't think we ever will. And so it's so different for each person. Okay. So it, I think I will agree completely with you, with you. Intuition. It's, it's, it's the base of it. We should listen first to ourselves and after to the exterior world. Why do you think that in our society that is happening less and less? And if you have a solution. Yeah, I think the big one is when humans feel lost in life, we do one of two things. Hmm. If I'm confused and I'm like, what do I do with my life, my career? We always do one thing is we conform. So we see what, is, what do mom and dad want? What does everybody in my city do for jobs? What do my friends do? Or we do the opposite, which is rebel. So we're like, screw you, mom. I'm going to China. Like, screw you. I'm not becoming an artist. Like, I'm not going to become a, a lawyer. I'm going to become a painter. But almost nobody does the middle path, which is, well, what do you really want? Like, what is your gut saying you want to do? Maybe you really do want to be a, a doctor, which is a normal conform job. That's okay. Maybe you really want to be an artist. That's okay. But the unconscious decision is I just do what everyone else is doing or I do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. But the conscious path is the middle, which is what do I really want to be doing? So I think that's one thing. When we're confused, again, we still look externally instead of internally. The second thing is the more information coming at you in your life, the harder it is to listen to yourself. And so I think 
that's why now you see the explosion of all these meditation apps, books on simplicity, Marie Kondo, tidying up. Exactly. It's because there's too much information and you can't even hear yourself internally, you know? And the more you consume, the less it is, the, the harder it is to hear what you really want. And so the solution I think is you just have to get away and find some silence. The silence can be as simple as two hours in a coffee shop with a nice coffee, writing about your life. What do I really want? Or it can be a three week vision quest like I did. Um, or it can be walking the Camino de Santiago, like whatever it is, finding some time for silence, which is just, you turn off everything outside and then you just sit and you're like, what do I really want in life? Like maybe I don't want to make multi million. I have a multi-million dollar business where I work 80 hours a week. Maybe I really don't want that. So I think that's the big thing. And I think the more there's more external than ever before. And I think if you're not careful, you can easily forget how you feel. Completely, man. I think we just do a clip of this and just put this because it's, and I think, yeah, do, I, I will call it to, to simplify if we can, it, a detox of all the information that we are bombarded because it's good. Part of it, it's good. We never, we never had so much information like we had today, but yeah. with that comes the price of it. Right. So uh, uh, I wanted to talk also, I, I believe that um, every human being has a purpose in life. I think we always have a, a different flame. Um, do you think that you already find yours completely? Also with the Chinese medicine or with this everything going? Yeah, I think, I really do think Chinese medicine is my purpose on earth, my work, you know, my work purpose. Um, and I think it's weird because when, when I reflect back, I can see how that, even as a kid, that's what I was looking for. But for some reason, it wasn't the right time or I, maybe I wasn't listening. Um, uh, do you know Joseph Campbell? The, mm. the author who talks about um, the hero's journey and follow your bliss and this, all this stuff? No, but I'm already taking notes. Okay. So Joseph Campbell talks about the kind of the hero's journey, which is this kind of struggle for your, I'm going to say purpose for lack of a better word. But one of the steps in this hero's journey is that you have a call. So there's something you feel like you have to do. But the next step is called the refusal of the call. So a lot of people, I feel like they, they have a feeling of what they want to do, but they're afraid of doing it. Or they refuse it because, again, mom wants me to be a lawyer. Or how am I ever going to leave America to go somewhere else? China or whatever it is and I think for me yeah for me I feel 100% on purpose that this is like this is what I'm on earth to do but it's always going to be evolving you know like modern health monk is still a huge part of my purpose I love creating the YouTube videos I love hearing from people every day about how it's helped them that's always going to be a part of my purpose and it's just you know there's new evolutions and there's new changes and always new things you know there will be 500 new projects in my life, new books, so many thousands of new videos, retreats, who knows? And I think, you know, the best description of this is uh, Paulo Coelho's book, The Alchemist. Uh, it's funny, I was just listening to an interview with him five minutes ago. Okay. Um, and I think for anyone that's trying to figure that out, that book is a really good guide to finding your way to that. And I don't know if, you know, there's, there's two problems. One is, not knowing what to do, which a lot of people say, but the bigger problem is not knowing what to do and not doing anything, okay. right? So even before I, like Chinese medicine, I just started at 29. I'm finishing, I graduated in three weeks, finished my doctorate. But before then it was like, well, so what do I do my whole life? I just do a boring desk job and I hate my life. No, like I built, Modern Health Monk has changed even every year. It started, I was a personal trainer. I knew personal training is not my passion. And then I started writing articles online. And I'm like, okay, this is getting different. And then after a few years, I could quit my job. And then I get tired of writing these stupid fitness weight loss articles. So then I change it. I put in a little bit more self-improvement. And now Modern Health Monk, the YouTube channel, which I only really started three, four years ago, that is, now it's only self-improvement. I don't want to talk about fitness at all. And so now 
it gets closer to my real purpose, you know? And then after a period of time, I'm like, you just, you keep listening, you keep listening. And you're like, what, what does life want me to do? And then Chinese medicine was like, wow, that is exactly it. So it's, I don't want people to think if they haven't found their purpose, they can just do nothing or waste time. Like you, you commit 100% to whatever the best thing is right now. You know, I created Modern Health Monk as a wellness, like fitness brand. It was not my passion, but I knew this is the best I have right now. I'm going to do my best. And then every year, I'm just going to try to get closer and closer to my purpose. Because otherwise, people wait their whole lives, you know, and then they're 50 and they never did anything, you know. So it's the danger is I, I do believe people have like the personal legend, as Paulo Coelho says. But if you haven't found it, keep practicing that listening of your gut and your intuition, but also still pursue mastery and excellence in your life right now. Even if the job is not the passion, do the best you can until you can get to something closer to feels like your purpose. Whoa, whoa, perfect, man. <laughs> whoa, really, really. I'm, I was, um, at the time came me one cent that uh, Gary V talked about it. He said it like, even if you don't know your purpose, try it, try mm. it, different things, and maybe it will come. Be, and yeah, yeah, your brand, the evolution of it from the, 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 the fitness until the, the, it's, it's, so I will say, if you have advice for the ones that are a little bit lost, it will be, can you finish this? Yeah write out a list of everything that's even a little bit of an idea. Find five people that are local or online and then buy them a cup of coffee and ask them about what their field, what that is like. And if there are no people, email them, do a five minute Skype chat, five minute Zoom call, whatever you can get. Because you know that one conversation can solve that question for you that could take you years by just thinking. You know, like if you think being a doctor is one of your things on that list, don't, do not go to medical school first, right? Call five people that you know are doctors, either locally, online, you could go to clarity.fm. I guarantee you could easily find them and just ask them, what's the field like? Do you recommend it? And then trust your intuition from there. Because otherwise it can take your whole life to, to try to solve these by thinking, by thinking. But if you just sit down and talk with people about their field, you'll get a much stronger hunch, intuition about, is this something I should investigate more? Well, yes, perfect, perfect. I think like action, it's something that you say also, do it, do it, do it. It's good to have a purpose, but do it. Also, I'm also doing the 100 day manifestation. Nice. That, that It's a challenge that I'm doing to myself. Um, do you want, to talk a little bit about that, uh, please. Yeah. So I, the backstory is I got into this because, so I was building my business and after like, maybe like five years, I just, it just started getting so boring, you know, like same thing every day, the like financially I was doing okay, but not like super successful. And I was like, so where I'm in this weird stuck spot, right? Like I'm like kind of having fun. And I'm kind of doing good financially, but like, I would prefer to just, even if I never made more money, I just want to feel much better. So I talked to a friend in LA and she coaches these business executives on how to trust their gut more in business. And so she talked about some principles of uh, how to approach business differently. So for, I, I promised myself, cause I was in the middle of my doctorate. I was so stressed out. I was I was overworking to the point I started to have health problems, like insomnia for several years, uh, acid reflux, you know, just working too many hours for too many years. So I was like, I have to do, I'm going to kill myself as an entrepreneur unless I do this differently. Um, and so for a hundred days, I was like, all right, I'm just going to do some things completely different from what I always did. The first thing is anything I hate in my business, I'm either going to completely stop or I'm gonna hire someone to do, and if I can't afford it, I'm just gonna stop, right? So one thing I stopped was, I stopped writing any articles about weight loss fitness, 100%, not one. And the content is the, the base of my business, so I was worried. Number two was, 
I hate email, right? So no emails. I hired a cheap virtual assistant in the Philippines. She answered all my emails. I hate, I, what do I hate? I hate sales. I hate marketing. I hate business. I don't like business, right? So then I was like, okay, is there a part of my business that I hate? And I basically stopped doing anything that didn't make me feel alive again, excited. All of it. And I thought my whole business was going to fail. I completely thought I was going to go broke, you know, and then ironically, a month before this Google algorithm came called Medic and a lot of these health websites, all their traffic just went like this. It just tanked. And I was like, I'm screwed. I guess I'm screwed. Right. So, but that was that, this, I said, I promised just for a hundred days, I know my business won't fail in one season of the year. Right. I can always go back to what I hate. So I go and then it's, I start doing only the things that excite me. I start doing things that excite me, even if it was not connected to my business, anything. So like nothing, things I didn't think would increase my business. Like I wanted to redesign my website to look more professional, but it, it costs money. And so I was like, why would I do that? I also wanted to redesign my master of the day book cover, just all these little things that probably were not going to make me money. So I never did it because I don't, I don't have a lot of money, right? I had to like be careful about how I spend. So time goes on. And I, my only promise is I'm going to trust my gut. Even if it makes no sense, it makes, it doesn't make any sense what my intuition saying, I'm going to do what makes me excited, feel alive, feel young again, feel energized. I'm going to stop doing all the stuff that doesn't feel connected. So that July I'm, and then of course I, you know, I have a, uh, let me see, maybe I have it with me here. So Right. So I had the whole, you know, this, this famous thing, right. With all my, uh, all my eyes, all of that. So, you know, I still have that with all my little, like the sheet. So I'm dividing in three also. Yeah, of course. That's, that's what I'm doing right after this call. Okay. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit after because man, yeah. it's, well, but tell me, tell me, please. So I do this for, a couple months and I go to Italy in July for a wedding in Lake Como and with my family, I'm at this beautiful area with my friends getting married and I come back and I looked at my revenue for the month of July and it was like two, two times my highest record month ever. And I didn't work the whole month. I took the whole month. I was like, I'm so stressed all these, like, I'm starting to have health problems. I'm, I already work out every other day. I meditate every day. I eat healthy every day, but just stress. And I had my highest revenue month. I think it was like, for some, it was like a really big number for me at then. It was like 10,000 US a month with like almost all profit, like 9,500 went in my bank. And I was like, what? And I, what, I wasn't even really working. It was fun. I was sitting in freaking like Como drinking coffee with my family. And I was like, <laughs> And I was like, whoa. So that first of all showed me that I don't have to work as hard as I think. That was very important to me because I'd been working too many hours. And to show that I could work half or even one third. And also working harder doesn't really guarantee you reach your goals at all. And it doesn't even necessarily mean you reach it faster. There's something about that like you set that intention and then you kind of relax. And you like give it a little bit of space. It's the same with the silence thing, right? Like you leave some space for peace in your life. And then oftentimes a shortcut will actually come from that. Exactly. You know, and after it's like you said it, I think it's ask and after listen. By listen, I will I will say like you describe it, your intuition again and again and again. Yeah. And after yeah, it's 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 believe in the process, man, but it's it's amazing. I, I'm waiting for it. And also like connecting a little bit because like it's amazing. So because we have to do it. You are an author, you are a student, yeah. You you are managing a a, a brand, a YouTube channel channel. How you manage your twenty four hours? Because everybody has twenty four hours, man. Yeah. I mean the big one is I'm really productive. So I know, I guarantee in my, my six hour workday is probably most people's 10 hour workday. Cause I see how like the average entrepreneur works. I see how my classmates study. It's all like, it's all half here, half there. 
Hmm. Like when I work, my phone is in my bedroom or I'm away from my home. I set a timer, right? Like I said, like a kitchen timer. And then that timer reminds me when I'm working, only work. There's no email, no nudicles, there's no nothing. And then if I get distracted, I remind myself, okay, I just have to go 30 more minutes and then I'm, but I'm all in. So it really begins like, I mean, you've talked about this thing. What this is, is really just, it's really reminding myself, what are the, the things that are really the most important to get results? You know? So I think the big thing with productivity is not about doing more. It's about doing less, but let, you know, more of the right. Smart. Yeah. So like, let's say you want to get fit or you want to build a business. Well, if you want to get fit, you could of course have a list this long of all the crazy things to eat, all the crazy things to do, but really all you have to do is you have to change daily food habits and daily exercise habits. And maybe if your sleep is really bad, fix that. But if you do those things, that's it. That's like, that's this much, you know, the 2% of the 100 things you could do. Exactly. Building a business, honestly, on some level is the same thing. Like my business is very simple. All I have to do, you know, there's a hundred things, podcast, Instagram, YouTube, blah, 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 all this BS that everyone wants you to do. None of that matters. The only thing that grows my business this much, create content and sell my own products. <laughs> That's it. So this list makes sure that all I'm doing is this and not all of this. So you have to figure out whatever the goal is, what is that, that tiny percent that really makes the difference? And so I've practiced that kind of thinking so that, you know, my business, a couple hours a day is, is more than I need to get everything done, you know, and I can, I can take, uh, I could probably work 10 hours a month in my business and it would still grow. So I've applied the same thing to my medical schooling where it's okay. What is the most important? If there's only one thing it's, I have to study every day, right? Like, I don't know how many hours, one hour, three hours, five hours. I don't know. So this sheet is making sure the one thing or the two things or the three things I'm always focusing on what's most essential. And I think that's the big difference because I'm really good at being disciplined, but I had to train myself to think like this. And I think for anything, you can get so overwhelmed into doing all these things. But if you dare yourself for a week to see if I work half the hours, can I get the same result? And usually you can, and that's a very big lesson. Exactly, but it's brilliant. The way I, I also want that you talk now a little bit because connecting, it's I think it's everything connecting with you. It's journaling with because it's with the list because you use a lot the journaling to 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 manage your time, to manage your habits. Can you say how you use it? Because you make it it's it's simple. Right. So the way. I think the way I try to think about everything is <clears throat> how can I make it a, a system or a habit? So the way I use journaling as a habit is every Thursday I have a call with four friends. They all have their own businesses. They're all trying to build their brands. And before that call, I dedicate one hour to an Evernote page. And the Evernote page is just called, I call it a strategy page. And I talk about my main three goals I'm working on. And then I break it down by each habit I'm doing every week for each of those goals. And then I just rate myself. Uh, did I make progress? What worked? What didn't work? And then I have, so I can look in Evernote in that file every single week of the year. And I can track, did I do it? Did I not do it? Uh, am I making no progress? Do I hate this goal? Like, what do I need to do to change the way I go about getting there? Uh, and then beneath it, the first half is, my goals and my daily habits. The second half is uh, my virtues. So what character traits do I have to work on, right? So do I have to work on being, um, you know, more friendly? Do I have to work on smiling more? Do I have to work on being more relaxed? Do I have to work on being, um, you know, being someone who doesn't speak negatively about people? So I try to really, because I think if you work on your character, you ultimately will get the life you want, right? Yeah. Because a disciplined character will be sex successful at everything. Like a disciplined person can be successful business, successful in love, successful parent, successful at financially doing well. So like I really focus it's on the character. Same yeah. 
it's the same template for a great life. So that's why I, I make sure I have goals, but I also have the character traits like Benjamin Franklin, his, you know, his virtue uh, scorecard. Thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Very similar, yeah. No, but it's, it's awesome. The, the, well, it's, it's really a lot of information that I'm taking. About your, your I think you said it that um, morning habits, it's not everything. You have to work it out, but yeah. I'm very curious about like, what is a normal Alex day? How you can yeah. say it from morning until night. Okay, so let's say a regular day is, I get up typically about eight, and then I do Qigong type of uh, Chinese exercise slash meditation, breathing exercise for about 35 minutes. I open up this book, which just has basically, you know, it has what I, the goals I'm working on now. Okay. Um, and I just go through my goals, visualize them, things like that for about maybe five minutes. Okay. Um, after that, I'll typically make breakfast and then I'll sit here, drink a bunch of tea while I'm working. And then I typically do, because I'm, I'm juggling school and a business, every day is different. So typically I'll do like three hours a work block. And okay. then I try to never work more than two hours at a time. Okay. Like I, so even in the two hours, I take breaks, but two to three hours, never without changing my physical location. And that's one way I've noticed to have higher energy. So like I do three hours, I work at home and then I go, I have patients. So I have to go see patients at the clinic and then I have to do my next work block after. So maybe my next work block, I go to a coffee shop. So I found that changing location is a great way to maintain productivity. And then six or seven, I go work out of the gym. I typically just do weights and then seven, eight is dinner. And then depending on the day, if it's during the week, I'll typically stop work then. And then in the evening, I'll just do whatever. If it's with a friend, we'll make dinner. If not, um, I'll read, I'll play a video game. I'll watch Netflix. I'll just put on an interview on the TV in the background and just work on some other boring project or something I have to get done. Um, and then the weekend, yeah, the weekend I like to spend with friends, but Typically, I like to spend, I like to work a couple hours in a coffee shop, like uh, Saturday, Sunday. I like to spend my afternoon still working, but, and then try to spend it with more family and, and things like that. But it's pretty, it's pretty simple, you know, no, no magic day to day. It's just, it's just the discipline of doing it regularly, you know? Beautiful. I want, I was curious when I was listening to you, why do you think it's important to change the location? Because I think it's, it's, I don't listen to a lot of people saying that. You know, for me, I think it's just, I think a lot of the reason we get bored during work is because the mind just wants some stimulation. Okay. So like, I think that's why so many people drink coffee is not because of the energy. It's just I'm, like, I'm here, I'm nine hours in my job. Like that's so, that's so many hours. Exactly. Like it's just sitting here. Like I just, I just want something to do, you know, like, oh, like let's go, let's go do a coffee break, go to the cafe right corner it's so exciting you know when every day is the same it's really nice to go to a coffee shop and so you know for me I've noticed uh, that just helps me it helps me change my state and I like to mm -hmm. if my schedule is flexible I'll go to the gym in the middle of the day because that gives me some more energy for the rest of the day but you know if it's, if my work schedule is more nine to five then I'll go at the end of the day okay all right yeah. Already, already done. Yeah, beautiful. I, I wanted um, also to to ask you about how you describe your mindset. Mm. How would I describe it? I would describe. I think the biggest thing that kind of drives me is really uh, growth. So I primarily focus on the things I can get better at, and I think in general my mindset is successful and un unusual people are not that special. Okay. And I think that by itself is very empowering because if you believe successful people are different, then you think they have something you don't, but the more you meet them, the more you realize they are not special. They are very, very much not special. So I think that by itself gives me kind of power because if I'm, if I'm unsuccessful, I go in a room of successful people. I don't think they're special. Uh, at all I really I like they've done they work hard that I know that's impressive some of them are very very smart some of them have very unique gifts but the most I've seen I, I don't see that and so 
my first belief, the unusually successful, however you define that in exactly. arts or music or whatever, I don't view them as that unusual. They're not aliens. I think the other thing is, I feel like you can achieve most of your goals. I'm like, the way I like, I talk to myself, I'm like, if I just do the opposite of what the average person does, I'll probably be successful. <laughs> so it's like, it's kind of simple, but it's like, okay, what does the average person do regarding their goals? Okay, not much, right? Like they say they have a dream, they work for one week, it doesn't work and they quit. Okay, I just know I do the opposite. So my friends come home, they watch Netflix three, four hours. Instead, I'm gonna come home I'm just going to do two hours in my main dream and then I can watch Netflix. So I can, maybe that's like ego, like competition. Like I'm seeing these other people and how I can be better. I'm not sure, but I think the fastest path to getting results is you could observe the average person. And because most people have average results in life, you can just do the opposite. So if you notice they work very little, you could work a lot. If you notice they're not that creative in their work, they're very just like hammer away, same thing then maybe you stop and you act creative. Um, I also noticed that in the same way, most people just don't think about life, right? Mm -hmm. So what does the average person do? They just get their job at 22. They want the $70,000 job. They get the girl, they get married, whatever. I don't see people think. So I'm like, okay, average person doesn't think. They just do what they see everyone else doing. So what, what, if I want an exceptional life, I have to think. So then I create the ritual of thinking every Thursday for an hour, write down everything, journal, strategize. So I think my fundamental mindset is if, I, if I'm always getting better, how can I not achieve my goals? And then also, you know, that, you know, it's, it's weird because unless you've done something, you usually don't believe you can do it. So then it's, it's complicated because if you don't believe you can write a book, how do you write a book? Because most people will never try. So it's like that stacking the bricks analogy where everything you achieve, you then begin to see how you can achieve the next thing. Exactly. And each thing builds more confidence and more self-esteem. So I think my fundamental life, like my fundamental mindset is that I can get better. That's what drives me more than anything. You know, I think because I believe I can get better, I don't really see that many things I don't think I could achieve if I want to. Yeah. Yeah. But, yep. but that's a hard belief because a lot of people don't believe they can get better, right? A lot of people believe I just, this is just how I am. You know, this is just my, my brain, my life, my body, my, you know, no women that I like, like me, whatever the story is, you know, that it's called a fixed mindset. That's, that can be hard to overcome. The fix between the fix and the grow mindset. And after, it's like you said it, like, do the people ask themselves, I'm, do I want to get better? Like you were saying, sometimes people, it, it's difficult because sometimes people just prefer to, to watch three hours Netflix and don't have the, this kind of conversations with themselves. And yeah. I think it's, 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 it's really important. What, like you said it, like most of the people in, one of your videos and I think it's, it's a great idea just think uh, one time per year about the the, the goals yeah when we pass exactly you know you most people think one time their whole year about what they want life to be if you do that every day 365 times like you're gonna get your goals so much faster and it's so easy like just go for a walk after work 15 minutes and just think like, what do I want my life to look like? It doesn't have to be the craziest fantasy. It could just be, you know what? I just want to work nine to five and I want to enjoy my work and have a nice vacation with my dream girl. And I just want to be around best friends. Like that's an amazing life. But if you don't think about it, it's probably not just going to happen, you know? And that's an easy habit. That's an easy habit that will change anybody's life. Love it, love it. And after that, I love it also the way that you you break it down as as you have the goals. I think if people can understand that, you have the goals and you break it in the little uh, uh, daily habits. Mm. Can you describe it? Can you give uh, another example, please? Just, just yeah. for the people to understand how, how it's your mind because it's... Well. 
Yeah. So let's say, you know, let's say you're a guy and your main goal is you want a girlfriend. Okay. So, right. Big goal. I want to have, I want to date my dream girl. So the first thing is like, what do I have to do? What do I have to do to do that? So then we can break it down. The, the big thing for me is there are a lot of things you could do, but I always recommend focusing on habits. Like what's a concrete way I have to change every day. That's, that will get you results. So let's say I'm an introverted guy. Maybe I'm not super confident. Um, my career is kind of, eh, you know, it's, it's not so impressive. It's not even what I like. So my rituals, what do I have to work on? On the me side, I need to become a better version of myself. I want to, I want to really love myself to the point where I know a girl that is intimidating to me would love me too, but I have to work on myself first. So what am I going to do to improve myself? Okay. I'm just going to pick two habits. One is I'm going to dedicate every time, time every day to finding the right career and trying to become the best at it. And I, I really want to love it. I, I really want to be, you know, impress myself. And number two, I'm just going to set a weekly challenge for some way that I can improve myself. Maybe it is my fitness. Maybe it is, I want to be a better conversationalist. I want to be good at talking to people comfortable. Maybe it's, maybe you take vacations. So you have interesting adventures. you like, you really love your life. So internally, what am I going to work on? I'm going to work on the better career. And the habit is I'm going to dedicate time every night to either becoming better in my field or finding the right field. The second one is the inner confidence. I want to really, I want to really love myself. I really want to like myself and respect myself. How am I going to do that? That could be different for every person. Maybe for one guy, it's fitness, getting a good body. He feels good about himself. Maybe another guy it's from career. Maybe another guy it's adventurous life. So finding one habit, maybe the habit is you work out every other day, you dedicate yourself to mastery in your career, or you decide you're going to do these four bucket list trips every year, the most interesting, fun life. Okay. So now that's on your side. Now, in terms of the girl's side, what do I have to do? What do I have to change my habits? Like, I don't see these dream girls walking around every day. Like, where, like, where are they? So what's my habit going to be? I'm going to start going to three events per week that are actual around people. I'm going to be more social than I normally feel comfortable. And at these events, my only challenge is I have to talk to one girl just naturally, not a weirdo, not trying to pick her up, just being friendly and just practicing being a guy who naturally bumps into women all the time. So my habit here is I have got to go to my calendar. I'm going to find three events per week, local events. I'm going to go to them and I'm going to be just genuinely interested in other people. And if I meet a girl I'm into, I'm going to ask for her phone number and we'll get coffee and catch up. So now the big goal of, I want to find the dream girl. You now have a very clear mission every day. My mission is I'm going to dedicate myself to finding my right work and mastering it and being the best I can. I'm going to find one main hobby to develop a lot of confidence. If it's fitness, that. If it's an adventurous life, that. If it's something else, that. And then my other habits I have to change regarding dating is I have to meet more women. And so I'm going to go to three events a week. I'm going to be genuine. I'm just going to try to meet people. And if I meet a great girl, then I'm going to ask her out. So now you have that piece of paper could, you know, you could be like, okay, exactly. you know, 10 o'clock at night, I'm going to try to figure out how to be the best in my field. I'm going to think about that. And then, you know, my second thing is I'm going to start going to the gym every other day for an hour, you know? And then the last thing is I'm going to start planning out like a long bucket list of all the cool things in life. And I'm going to start, I'm going to book a flight tonight for six months from now. And then on the back, it's okay. Event one, event two, event three, boom. You're going to be a different person in six months. And that's it. Little paper and that, that will change your life. Change so, your life completely, completely. And you use it in such a different ways because it's the way that you organize your day, but it's the way that you get to find your your goals it's beautiful man it's really yeah, i'm yeah. really amazed really I, i i already knew you and follow your job for a couple of years but talking with you it's a boom of of, of knowledge <laughs> coming to <laughs> and i also want to talk because i think the common for the success that i'm seeing and then 
when you talk with people it's consistency yeah and i think it's it's the most difficult if we can say it. keep yeah. the consistency i know that you can talk a little bit about that because of the fitness or the health part that is something that you do i think for more than 10 years now can you talk yeah. a little bit about that please and how we yeah. can use it you know it's tricky because there are some things all of us naturally are consistent at right like if you love your work or if you love like playing video games it's easy to be consistent playing video games it's fun <laughs> right? so i think on one level consistency is just build a life that's more fun to you right that's why like doing work you enjoy is easier to be the best because you want to do it every day you know you want to do it all day when you're excited about something but there are a lot of things in life that are not that exciting you know some people love the gym and some people hate it but they still do it and so that's why i think there's this this yin and yang the inside is try your best to build a life where everything is effortless because you love it okay. but that won't be everything you know it's just not and even if you love it there's going to be hard parts of life where you have to push and you have to fight so that to me is where the discipline comes in and i think it's worth developing both so on this side, listening to your gut on what things excite you. So if your goal is to get fit, you don't have to do intense cardio training. You know, you can, if you love yoga, you could do that. If you love the weights, you could do that. Trail running, walking your dog, you know, whatever. And then on the other side though, still trying to be disciplined, which means I said I was going to do this. And even if I don't feel like it tomorrow, I'm still going to do it. So you can just practicing that muscle. Maybe it's, I said I was going to get a cup of coffee with this person, but ah, like I'm, I'm so tired. I had a terrible day at work, but you still do it. You're training the discipline muscle. So there are ways to, I would recommend developing both. I try to always develop both in my life. Um, you know, like fitness for me, going to the gym is something I've always liked. As soon, after like a year or two, it's like, it's like an addiction now. Like I, if I go two days without it, I start getting like agitated. So like I crave it, but business I've never liked. It ne has not got like thinking about like conversion rates and marketing and sales, like creating more customers. That's just not my passion, but I've, but I'm disciplined about it because that's just what it took to build a you know, successful business. So I think if people can push on both ends to learn how to get both of those, you can really build that consistency. And if those don't work, trying to find external consistency, right? So you have like a call every week with friends where you're sharing your goals or going to the gym with a friend. It's so much easier to go work out with a friend if you don't like the gym, so much easier. So if you can't get the internal consistency from excitement, from discipline, find external accountability. And one way is to do it with a friend or do it with other people. So I will summarize, like find what you love and have some external person or you, you talk about the masterclass. Can you, for the ones that don't know, can you describe what is a masterclass? Can you explain a little bit? Yeah. Like, um, so a masterclass you said? Yeah. 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 The, yeah the, I mean, Oh, a mastermind. Mastermind. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. No, sorry. No, it's okay. Sorry. Excuse me. Yeah. Ba basically, you know, the original mastermind was Jesus and his disciples, right? It's, you have this, a group of people that are coming together for some kind of vision they want to build. Now in business, often people have extended this to where you have, you know, like business dinners and you're all discussing strategy and what you want to build. But the way I use it is to have accountability and just have people to talk with that are also hungry about improving their life. And so for us, we do for five years, every week, we do a 45 minute call every Thursday and we just share goals for the week. What did I do? What did I not do? What I'm struggling with? And then other people can throw on their feedback. Um, and so it's just like, it, re it works really well for goals because if you didn't do your goals on the day before, you're like, oh crap, I've got that call tomorrow. I don't want to look at it. Somebody will tell you something. Yeah. So even if it's a friend, you know, you, I said I was going to do all this. And then tomorrow I have nothing to talk about if I didn't do my goal. So the, at the beginning, it's really helpful to have a group like that. 
completely, completely. The accountability that you were talking, like going to the gym. Uh, I want to also, if you can tell me a little bit about the, the, the new products, the new projects that you have now, what are you doing now, please? Yeah. So the next few months are interesting. Um, so I'm finishing my doctorate in a few exactly. weeks. And then I'm actually going to be opening up a private medical practice and seeing patients. So I'm going to be doing um, kind of like a hybrid life where three, four days a week I see patients and the rest is for continuing to build out these brands. Okay. And, you know, I have a lot of ideas right now. I mean, one was, would be converting this into like a little, like a little, I'm not going to say Bible because that sounds terrible, but like, you know, this is like the thing that is my master playbook for, you know, I think it's my genius. Yeah. So I, I would like to create a copy and just sell it for a few dollars for people to help them. They may just read through it every morning. But what I really want is, yeah, I really want to, I'm going to begin seeing patients probably September, October, and then continue to build out this brand. And I would love to do like a retreat in Hawaii soon. Um, I'm going to be spending time in, uh, on the Camino. I'm going to be doing the whole Camino to Santiago. Really? September and half of October. Okay, yeah. so and so, you will just do the the Camino, or you will pass to Germany to to. Well, well, it's probably <laughs> probably just the Camino this time okay. because five, you know, five maybe six weeks is already a long time not to okay. work. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try, you know, I'm I'm at one of these big transitions where mm. I had you know a relationship end, my school is ending, I'm moving different cities, a lot everything in my life is in flux. So I need some time to really meditate and going back to what we said, find the silence to figure out what, what do I want? What's my vision? So what I'm really excited about is I'm really excited to see patients in person because okay. Chinese medicine fixed my lifelong GI problems when the doctors could not. Exactly. And really excited to build out um, like the next level of my content because I'm, I'm moving to LA And so LA has so many good uh, film people, you know, like YouTube production. Exactly. So building, I would love to build a small team in person and then we could just make much better content. Um, and then I think it's going to be the beginning of much, much bigger things. I did, um, my doctoral work is studying spontaneous cancer remissions. So my next book is going to be a traditionally published book on cancer probably. So all, a lot of, a lot of things coming out in the next Whoa. few years, but the next, uh, The next big thing is definitely the Camino. And then I can figure out what's my, my new North Star, my new path. The next vision, vision quest trip, we will yep. call it. Beautiful. Vision quest, but lots of wine this time. <laughs> Patatas bravas, maybe. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> the best vision quest. No, so nothing good. more food. <laughs> a good tapas, at least you will have a, a good, good tapas. Yeah. 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 Man, but it's, yeah. it's so, so beautiful. Um, Can you tell me a little bit about the new book? Just like a little spice because come on, it's like a bomb. And yeah. I'm, I'm very interested. Yeah, so yeah, basically, I mean, Chinese medicine has a very different view of healing than conventional medicine. And you know, from the outside, if you don't know it, it seems like it's some hippie crap, like it's it's uh, fake or it doesn't work, or it's you're killing all these animals <laughs> to to create these medicines, but The real Chinese medicine is incredible. And the philosophy of healing, the, the fact that it still works a few thousand years later is crazy to me. So there's something really special about it. And, you know, it's interesting because even in the case of like healing from cancer, when you talk to a lot of the patients, mm -hmm. a lot of them talk about the things we talk about here, like trusting their intuition, even if it's not what the doctor said. And the ability of, you know, like a lot of these people felt off track in life, off purpose. And cancer was the sign for them to feel like, what do I really want to do? What excites me? What do I feel like is my passion? Or what was the dream that I gave up on? And I'm interested in studying both the medical side, but also the inner perspective of the patient, what they, yeah, where those two things meet. So this book is really going to be about these people healing from cancer, but analyzed through the healing principles of Chinese medicine. And, you know, one, it's interesting. One of the highest principles is um, treating, quote, the spirit. So one of the highest philosophies of medicine is you treat the spirit of the person first, right? So again, it's this whole Inside. thing. Yeah, 
you can try to do all the external things you want. You can try to push and work hard and like study business strategy, but there's just, there is undeniable magic that happens when you trust your gut about even just career, even finances. There's something that happens, you know, these, these things that line up for you when you follow your, your hunches about certain things in life. So yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in seeing um, what I end up coming up with, but I probably will not start that maybe for another year, but um, be very interesting to see. And me too. I can assure you, I'm very interested also <laughs> to see because, like, yeah, it's at least I, I don't know in in Europe we don't talk a lot about that kind of medicine. Yeah. And it's like it's like you were saying like you take the pills, you try to work from the outside, but you don't work the inside. Right. Like the business, the health, like it's completely connected. So yeah. and man. I don't know if you want to do that because I don't want to take you more time. It was already one hour. Like for me, it's, <laughs> yeah, I, I just look at now, really, man, because for me, I, I look at now the time and it was like flying. Really. <laughs> yeah, I've got five more minutes or so. Yeah. So let's get, let's get so, everything we can. No, I, I want just to synthesize really to, I will, uh, I will let the, the link here of the, the, the of also, or, or all, all your social media, but the Chinese medicine, I'm very interested in that. Can you talk a little bit like how it happened? What changed it making your life in your type of person that you are? Because I think I'm seeing a lot of impact in the person that you are today because of. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it was kind of accidental, but it feels like my destiny because, you know, I had always lifelong digestive problems but my family always ate very healthy. So I, it was a mystery, like no one could understand why I was having these digestive problems. And I saw all the normal doctors and nutritionists, dietitian, GI specialist, all these doctors, and they seemed very confident, but none, none of the advice they gave me helped. And so I kind of just stopped trying to fix it because I couldn't find a solution. And then maybe 27, 28, I met, a Chinese medicine practitioner and he gave me these Chinese herbs and the first month he gave me that it was the best my digestion had been my whole life. So I was really confused about what this was and I was really interested to see, you know, what was really happening there, uh, what was actually going on. And I think, I think the big thing with Chinese medicine is that it really bases its principles off of nature, right? So you view nature as like the most successful organism ever organism like it's it's lived the longest so it obviously knows how to survive right nature doesn't try to do anything that goes against its ability to survive but a lot of human life because of the human mind goes against principles that are quote natural or in alignment with living so you know a big thing with chinese medicine is really understanding how every factor in your life affects your physiology. So not only inside, like let's say we have the most obvious things are let's say diet, um, emotions, um, genetics, all these things, but other things affect us too, like the weather, right? Because we know there's more coronavirus cases where there's this damp weather and it's gonna decrease in the summer, but it's gonna come back in the fall. So ancient Chinese doctors predicted even coronavirus. In a book from thousands of years ago, really? it says on these kinds of years, you're going to expect these kinds of pathogenic viruses. 2000 year old book predicted this. Whoa. So they, the whole thing of Chinese medicine is there are patterns in nature that predict illness in people. And there are also patterns in people that predict illness. And so if you understand those patterns and where those patterns meet, you can understand and prevent illness or you can fix it. So a big thing is you always look at the, the intersection of symptoms. So like clinically, you know, a doctor will typically say like, oh, like my toe hurts. And then they send you the toe doctor. But what if your toe hurts because of your bad diet? What if your toe hurts because of emotions? What if your toe hurts because you smash it with a hammer? You know, there's all these different reasons, but they treat it always the same. Or what if you come in with insomnia, but one person has insomnia because they got divorced and this guy lost the love of his life. This guy has 
crazy work stress. This guy has acid reflux. This guy has just moved somewhere, has no friends. All these different causes, but most doctors don't treat them as different. You know, each of those needs a different kind of medicine. Exactly. And I think Chinese medicine, one advantage is it always looks at the different parts like that, but where they connect. So not like never, ever look at just insomnia. What else is going on? And then you can find where that intersection. That's like the key to figuring out how a person can heal. So that's kind of like a very basic um, introduction. Yeah. No, but it's, 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 it's beautiful, really, really, because, well, it's... It's the connection, like again and again, the, the inside with the exterior side. It's it's a reflex, also. I think, like you, you are so right. If you are yeah. not good inside, you will like you will reflect that. It's, I want to also tell me, tell me, please. Yeah, no. Well, it's and it, that's the other thing. Reminding that it's always related. So, like, if you think you go to your job and you hate it, and that's not connected to getting in a fight with your girlfriend later. Of course it is, right? So you begin to look at every piece of your life. Like maybe being happier might make you 10 times more successful, but you're, you're doing all these things to be successful that are make you less happy. So every, it's, it's a web, right? You pull more on this way and this gets pulled. You pull more this way, this gets pulled. Mm -hmm. Understanding that every piece of life is all connected like the spider's web. Exactly. Just try to pull the, the, the parts that you like more. And it yeah. goes, and it will yeah. put life up. I'm, I'm right. understanding completely. Like, and it's like, it's it's one of the things that I like you more. And in your videos, it's the way that you talk and the way that you make it simple. Not to, mm. you don't try to complicate. You synthesize. And for me, that is beautiful, beautiful. Like mm. I want now to talk because I know that you are a big reader. Yeah, big big reader. But I want to to make one 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 book. Just one book to advise, like somebody that is lost, you want to change your life, let's start with this book. Okay. Lost and want to change your life. Can I give you two? Two. I okay. see. You can. <laughs> it's a big Anybody reason. Should. So, the first one would be... Ask a Miracle. Okay. So, this one. Ah, okay. Finding okay. your own North Star. Okay, this one I didn't. This book, every human being on earth should read this book. Really? Okay. By Martha Beck, okay? Okay. And then with it, I would read The Alchemist also. Because both books are talking about the same thing, but this woman is absolutely incredible. And the whole book is, why do we do things that basically we don't, like why do we become a lawyer when mom wants us to become a lawyer? But inside... We want to do something else. So this, one of the most important books ever written. Whoa, this one, yes, I never, I think Alchemist, is, it's a well-known book, but this one, yeah. okay. Because this is more, you know, she's Harvard trained, uh, I think psychologist, and it's very, very tactical. It really breaks down some, some of the concepts similar to the Alchemist, like recognizing your gut when you're not on your right path and how to find the right path. I mean, and absolutely get I will this take it i will take it well also yeah. man i think you have a lot of knowledge so i want to ask a couple of less advice that you have to give it to me as an mm -hmm. improvement in life be, to have more success and then i don't mean in money but as a purpose yeah any less advice that you want to give me and to to, to the rest of the listeners you know i think it's I think for advice to really hit a person, it has to be the right advice at the right time for the right person. And so sometimes you read this book and it doesn't hit you because it's not the right time, right? It's not the right person. It's not the right moment. But I think reflecting back on my life, the biggest thing, there's just two things you need. The biggest thing is the ability to recognize your intuition, to recognize your gut feelings, and then to have the courage to actually do it, what it's saying. If you do that and you don't, if you don't ever make a decision from fear, you'll have the most incredible life you ever dreamed of. Because if you know that your life, you, you feel this feeling that you should do this thing, but you're too afraid, you're going to end up being that person that has always known what you wanted to do, but you never had the guts to do it. And so it's that, that thing, that fear standing between the dream person you want to be with, the dream career, 
the dream, whatever it is. But most of us are too afraid to listen to that, that intuition and then go after it. But that is the only thing standing between where you are and where you want to be. So I want, well, first, like, I want just, I was thinking, I was seeing the journey and I, I wanted to ask if I'm correct or not. So first, try to ask for the, the, the silence for you can, so you'll be able to, to listen yourself, your intuition. Yeah. And after, act on it. Right. Um, Make the brave decision. Exactly. Because it's gonna be it's gonna be scary as hell. You know? Yeah, just because jump if, from. because imagine your parents say, "Why are you? Why do you want to become a Chinese medicine doctor?" Right? I can't explain it. It's a feeling. So that's scary because I can't. No, there's no data on a spreadsheet. You know, no career career income salary. Like I can't give that. I can only say a feeling. So that's why we ignore it because. You, you can't show anything. I, I only know how I feel. There's no piece of paper I can show somebody. So that's why it's easy to ignore. 